you know usually we discuss in every discussion so here the thing is you know the speaker and host are organizing this meeting in the in our individual capacity only so we are not representing uh, our companies here just for your information okay and this presentation is strictly for learning purpose only uh, so the organizer or presenter you know do not hold any responsibility that same solution will work for your business requirements also that you may have to discuss separately with the uh, notice said uh, no various vendors so that's what uh, uh, we recommend and this presentation is not meant for any promotional activities as well so thanks for uh, this uh, regarding this housekeeping so what we do normally in every after completing every meetup so we'll be keeping a recording of this meetup that will be uploaded to event space within 24 hours so that you know people can refer to it and uh, this published in uh, different uh, uh, social media platforms as well right and questions can be submitted or asked at any time uh, in the chat and uh, we have also a general q and this sec section is there so either we can go to the general section or but i would recommend always you go to the q and a section of your uh, uh, panel of the, uh, the you know the session panel and you can there is a answers tab as well so you can try and make it more impactful right Please uh, give us feedbacks always. So we are also always uh, interested in uh, listening your feedback, listening your comments. So please give us suggestions. You know, uh, even we can suggest us for uh, future topics. So you know, if at all you are any any one of you interested speaker, so we can you guys can communicate either Supriya, Sumit, or me. So we are the meetup leaders here. And the most important thing, everyone will have the uh, access to uh, leave the event for all please please don't do that if you do that you know the event will be disconnected and uh, we won't be able to you know start again so please make sure when you're leaving at the event don't select or the leave the event for all options okay that's very important Thanks no that option only just to correct that option is gone now even how is it yeah for the okay. That, that comes only if you make it host, but if you give presenter access, that option will not come. Yeah, the thing is, you know, because maybe sometimes we make it with host because we want to take any photograph, we want to enable the video or something. Then we used to make you a yeah, only. but but still people uh it's just a request from our end uh, to not even try that option. Okay, if you want to leave, you can close your window, that's okay. But yeah, if you're seeing do that, that option, please don't use it. That's the <laughs> yes, <important>. yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Sandeep. Yeah yeah so the agenda wise uh, we are just starting with the introduction of uh, moderators and speakers first then we will go to the community details then uh, we'll be handing over to ashish and he will be taking care of cicd pipeline using git GitLab. how this can be created he'll be giving you the demonstration you know he'll be giving us a detailed demonstration so you guys can uh, do this if you want along with it i'm sure people can practice it right ashish that's what uh, yeah yeah, yeah. definitely yeah yeah and uh, if you have queries please raise it and at the end you'll have a trivia quiz as well okay so we'll be announcing winners at the same time right so uh, ashish pardi is our uh, uh, mulesoft uh, speaker so he's a, a mulesoft uh, coimbatore uh, leader as well as he's a mulesoft mentor as well at the same time so he has been uh, contributing heavily to the community for the last in for last two three years probably right ashish yeah. uh, so that's what i'm understanding and uh, myself, uh, Sandeep, and uh, Supriya and Sumita, we are the, um, uh, we are the leaders of uh, Kochi Meetup too. So just to give you an introduction about us, uh, organizers, uh, you know, we are. Uh, my name is Sandeep Krishnan. Okay, and uh, I am the one of the Kochi Mulesoft Meetup leader. So I am a Mulesoft trainer. At the same time, uh, we do a lot of uh, development projects, integration projects. You know, a lot of things we do. Totally, I have uh, ten plus years. Uh, almost 15 years of integration experience i'm a certified new soft developer a platform architect as well as an integration architect so supri i think uh, that's all from my side so you can just uh, introduce yourself and then you can move on uh, yes uh, so thank you our uh, people for joining i understand it's saturday how difficult it becomes sometimes uh, so yeah myself is supriya i'm a kochi mules of meetup leader i have uh, eight plus years of experience in it um, out of that five plus years is into me also so yeah i think that's it about me so today we don't don't have sumit he's traveling to another place so yeah that's it i think next slide Sandeep. 
yeah so these are the community details some of the forums you know we these are the register for meeting up uh, you know what we need to do how to register for official training platform you know training.newshop.com register for upcoming peak i think peak is already over i believe right uh, so yeah so i think yesterday was peak i think uh, so I, I don't know any sessions happening today i'm not sure about it but yesterday was the last day for pko i think uh but anyway future uh, registration or upcoming pkos are coming definitely you can just uh, yeah i think best way is on linkedin you can join a mule shop community yeah. you will keep getting the updates and like people like us who are like uh, community uh, meetup leaders uh, we keep posting the details about it so these events are like very useful and they themselves have a very good documentation over this uh, mule shop uh, sites so it is it is quite useful so in in a nutshell what we are trying to say is you know the community is you know so supportive there are a lot of support yes, people yes. who are really really interested in you know, soft domain a lot of people are there to support you guys so so many ways you can get help so new soft forums are there a lot of blogs you can read any point platform every uh, one month trial account that is what we are just discussing in the beginning of this session you know a lot yeah, of people for one month trial period itself you can try the complete life cycle of an api so that's very interesting actually okay and also uh, uh, you know as a mule soft perspective you know we normally conduct exam readiness sessions uh, once in a month or twice in a month so you can just again uh, watch the uh, the linkedin or the mule soft community for such sessions whenever it is being provided right so yeah there you go so i just uh, i'll stop sharing here uh, ashish so you can just uh, share your session and then you can just continue thanks thanks uh, ashish and uh, good luck Yeah, can you make me press? I am not able to share my screen. You stop the sharing first. Yeah, I'll stop it. Yeah, yeah, I'm stopping it. Okay. No. You are you are a presenter. Okay. Yeah. No, no, no. It was grayed out since you stopped. Now it's coming. Okay. okay. Able to see my screen? Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yes, okay. very much, Ashish. Yeah. Okay. So let me skip few slides from here so that. <clears throat> okay. Uh, hi everyone. Okay. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening, everyone. So this is Ashish here. Okay. And I have around 11 years of experience in technical, <coughs> I would say technical experience in industry, around six plus years of experience in IT integration domain, four plus in new soft. I'm a certified developer as well as architect, both architects. I'm a new soft mentor and leading Coimbatore mentor. So this uh, harbor statement and the housekeeping item, I'll just keep it. <coughs> okay. So the agenda is uh, very clear, right? So we are focusing today on DevOps, which is our CI/CD pipeline, where we'll talk about, so we, we uh, in this session, we are uh, picking GitLab, okay? Which is uh, powerful in itself. It's uh, maintaining the code repository as well as the, you know, uh, pipeline workflow, okay? So it, it's 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 uh, powerful. Why I'm saying is, uh, you know, uh, you can see there are a lot of configurations we can do there and, you know, you can build very rich pipeline from GitLab itself. Okay, so there are multiple variants available. I was discussing with the team that you know we have premium, we have uh, you know uh, global, we have trial. All those things are available. You can you can take a, you know advantage of trial account, and I think almost all the things you can do except the approval rules. Okay, I just talk about it. Approval rules you cannot do it in trial account, but in the license uh, you know uh, account you can do a lot of things. So we'll talk about how to build it from the scratch. Uh, we'll see uh, from one job how to share that, you know, the artifact generated from one job to the another job. For example, when you're deploying code to the dev environment or uh, test environment, how to take that jar which is built in the dev environment itself, how to take it to the test environment, how to take it to the prod environment, okay? So how to share that, okay? Uh, how to, you know, uh, load the, the uh, artifacts which are generated by load testing which is generated by your uh, you know your postman testing or emulate testing how to upload and how to download those things how to integrate caching with this because caching is very important okay so whenever you run the job sorry when you run the job you don't need to download the dependencies again and again okay it will take long so generally gitlab pipeline if you don't implement caching it takes around 10 minutes okay i'm just you know giving average uh, time okay 10 minutes around 10 minutes so we'll see how to you know integrate with the approval process. Okay, so <clears throat> there are there are ways to uh, create the approval groups and then add the approval rules 
and then whenever you do any merge right it will go to the approval group for appro uh, approval process once the group approved it right then only your merge request will be merged to the respective branch and then finally we'll talk about the engagement okay where uh, we'll be engaging our team members okay by producing the you know update from the the uh, status of the state of the job or ci cd pipeline whether somebody merged in the code pushing the code to your pipeline everything will be you know notified to the the team members you know uh, within a second so that is what we are talking about engagement so we can integrate the slack channel with our safety pipeline and your team will be more engaged and they will be you know will be getting update you know once anything happened or any update or any job fail or successful anything happens with your safety pipeline or code repository you will get notified that's the agenda for uh, today's uh, meetup so when we are discussing devops right so we need to we need to first understand what is the importance of devops right ci cd pipeline basically okay so if you go with the older style of development right so you need to you need to you know uh, require a lot of time to much different code base so whenever you start any big project right? multiple developers will be start working on the same code base basically so everybody will be you know checking their code so it's very really hard to you know uh, merge that code and if there are you know uh, conflicts resolve those conflicts on that so it's really hard to and uh, do that merging if you are doing it manually okay so that's a, if you have uh, you know unit testing so if you are doing manually it's, it's uh, really uh, you need a dedicated effort for that so dedicated effort required for the build also since you are doing the if you are, you are thinking of um, taking it manual then yes testing building everything needs a dedicated effort okay and for the deployment right, definitely you need human intervention and a human intervention always you know most of the time you will you'll end up in having errors sometimes you miss some property sometimes you do you know you deploy wrong jar to the wrong environment and it's possible so whenever human intervention is there you can expect errors dependency if you are dedicating any person then you know for that module that particular okay so he has to take care of you know uh, from the checking the code building the code testing the code deploying the code one users whoever you know implemented that or created that feature or uh, fixed the bug so he has to take care of the complete life cycle so this is like you know uh, it is like you know uh, stopping your you know you are not able to follow the it trends you will be a lot behind than the what is expected from the it trends right we have too much competition and if you do like this you definitely will be uh, far behind the competition okay so that's where your ci cd comes into picture what is ci cd right you, this is this is generic term it's not belong to any any particular you know i would say particular uh, domain it's everywhere okay so it's a generic term okay so basically continuously integrating continuously delivering the code continuously deploying what your ci cd means okay so there will be different stages here. So you start with plan, right? So that is what you design. So you design from there it starts. Then you code it, right? Then you build it, test it. Then you release that. Then that that release will be used. So the release management will happen in, in you know um, artifact repository. So you, you can you can integrate artifact repository with your CSD family. So whenever there is any issue in the production by deployment, right? You can take the previous charge which, which is which is perfectly working fine from the artifact repository that, that is really stage is really important okay so deploying and then finally you're monitoring so from the you know uh, platform point of view you'll be monitoring how your deployment is uh, you know, working so the, how your api is working how the uh, performance it is how the uh, throughput and then how requests are getting served all those things you know will be you know so, so where is your cicd comes in code build and test and then release deploy this is the part where our ci cd and dealer comes into pictures plan is your plan and code half code once you check in from that point your ci cd comes into picture okay so right so it it, 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 it the more visibility you can track who is checking the code you can tag who is doing that build you can see that which build is getting deployed in your 
your environment. Everything can be tracked from here. So small, small batches, small, small changes, small development for your projects, all will be, you know, uh, you know, mitigated uh, with the high quality, with uh, zero errors. To, to, it will reach to the to the production with the zero errors. Okay. So advantage, and you know, we'll see that in the coming slide, what advantage we'll, we'll be getting. So if you see what CACD offers, what what is there in the so there are several important you know uh, uh, development and you know development point of view or testing point of view benefits. Okay. So first benefit I would say okay. So when we are doing when we are doing uh, 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 CICD approach, so we'll be able to figure out the defects you know in a faster manner. So we'll identify the the you know uh, uh, defects. And we'll fix those uh, defects in in faster way because we are doing small small things, right? In CI/CD, we'll be doing small small things. CI/CD allows, you know, this is an elegant way of establish the appropriate. Uh, so everywhere we'll be uh, putting the gates, okay? So code scanning will be there, eminent testing will be there. Then you are doing load testing. So even everything is fine. Let's say I'm talking about defects. So let's say your eminent tests are fine, your uh, postman tests are fine. Now you want to do load testing. So for example, your API. You 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 are thinking right? So this is a non-functional requirement that okay you're able to handle let's say hundred requests per second. Okay, so that that you need to test because your code is fine, everything is fine, but now your API is not able to handle hundred requests, right? So those things will be you know before reaching your production, those will be identified by these gates, quality gates, and all these you know testing gates and all this. So fast feedback and then the because of the fast feedback, the developers will be coming to picture quickly. They will be fixing the bugs, you know, uh, address or right. So that is the advantage. We'll get the faster, you know, identification result. Reduce overhead. Why? Why this point is here, right? So see, if you are finding a bug very quickly, right? So in early stages, if you find the bug, okay, so development will be less, okay, and it will be fixed in cheapest uh, possible way. If you find a production right it will cost you too much because you need to follow the complete life cycle again go to development and do a lot of things here okay so overhead cost will be too much if you find that bug in in your uh, okay. so better to have cicd that will you know uh, save a you know, lot of time lot of money and lot of dedicated efforts okay now, third one is better quality assurance. Yeah, definitely, if, if the first two things are covered, third thing automatically inherited from there. So, so CI/CD enables QA team to release deployment softwares at the and at the point you know in 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 time. Uh, so, and if you don't have QA team, right? So, if you think about it, if you, your QA don't do the testing, think about it. It's can you go to the production or can you go to the pre-production? No, not possible. Okay. So the CI/CD enables that part. Okay, then yeah, assumptions will be uh, you know. So since no, where is my point? <clears throat> okay, so reduce the assumption. So why why I'm saying reduce the assumption here? So CI/CD uh, you know replace your testing assumptions. So sometimes we assume a lot of things, right? If you do testing, then you see the real results, and from the real results, all assumptions what you do, right? Those will get either justify or they will prove you wrong right so based on the testing results you will reduce the assumptions okay then faster time to market definitely so if you are if you are you know your dedicated for this particular feature or particular project development if, if it reduce right definitely go to the uh, market you know less time okay so and that and then software health measurability so if above points are covered your software health will be very good software health means basically the defect free okay that's what these are the benefits you'll get it from your uh, cicd pipeline okay now we'll see the workflow how the cicd looks. just um, picking the gitlab so any point studio you will develop the code you will do the emulate uh, testing work there then git comes into picture okay so let me take the so your git comes into picture okay so what Git does, it will check in your code to the Git repository from here. Okay, either you uh, use any point studio directly, or you can use a command line. You can you can go to the command line and from there, from.
from the CMD, you can use the kit and do the whatever job. You know, it's better to do it from the any point studio because Maven is embedded there, your Git is embedded there, your uh, Java is embedded there, your tool server is embedded there. Everything is there. You can do the uh, testing. But if you're running, you can go ahead and you can use a Maven. You can do the your build. You can do the test. You can you can even deploy from from the command line. So this part also you can do. Okay, this Git also you can add it to the command line from here also. If you're expert, you can do it from here itself. Okay. Now once you check in the code, right? So you'll be having pipeline. Okay, that pipeline will trigger. So what is there in the pipeline? Pipeline is basically you know, uh, it will be having number of checks, number of uh, tips, job. So basically, we'll be executing some some scripts there. So this GitLab, Git, uh, uh, GitLab or any 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 tool, they are not doing any magic behind the scenes. They are using Maven only. Okay. If you see any any tool right behind the scenes, they use Maven. They use Java. These two things definitely by default will find to be there. Okay. So Maven will be building your code and Java. Definitely you need a Java environment to execute that code, right? So these two things always will be there. You know, whenever you pick the gen key in your GitHub actions or anybody, these things will be automatically behind the scenes will be there for you. Okay. Now, so once the code will be built, run, then in special test if you have anything, then so if you if you see here, once this is built, right? It will go to the artifact repository. So let's say when you are triggering this same pipeline for test deployment, the artifact will be picked up from here. Okay, so it will go back here. Okay, so don't think that it will go to build again. No. Okay, so it, the build state stage will be skipped. Build will be only happen in the development environment. After that, we'll be using artifact. There is an API to download this jar to the other jobs. Okay, so this jar will be downloaded by you know APIs. So we can use the APIs to download this to other jobs. Okay. Let's say we are, we are talking about only dev job right now. So let's say this is a dev job. Okay. So this this actually the picture is uh, kind of you know merge of all three jobs: a dev job, test job, and production. Because integration test we won't be doing the dev right. So it will be generally we do it in the test environment like uh, pre prod environments, which is like you know equivalent to your production environment. There we do the load testing. There we do the you know, postman testing, all those things will be doing for that. Okay, so because infrastructure wise, for load testing, infrastructure wise, load testing has to be done on the the environment which is equal. Okay, you can do the results from the dev environment for load testing. No way, because dev will be your sandbox, right? Dev will be your sandbox, and you need something like production kind of environment because the cores used in sandbox and cores used in production will be different. Infrastructure will be different. Okay. So that's the reason we generally have pre prod environment to do the load testing and all that stuff. Okay. So in your testing, integration testing is done. You will feel you will feel here and everywhere, guys. Okay. So till here, you are ready for the deployment. Okay. So ready for till here, you don't need any any approval. Okay. Basically, here you need approval. First approval, you know, you can have here. Uh, let's say you are doing merge request here. First approval, you can add it here. Building the code, unit testing, integration. Conditionally, you can do again here in the pipeline. You can add the conditions. You can have uh, project level variables, and based on those values, you can decide whether you want to do unit testing or not, whether you want to do uh, integration testing or not, load testing or not. You can control conditionally. Okay? So you can go ahead with the variables and control. One approval process you can have it here. While merging it, right? Where you are merging, it, whether you are merging to dev branch, whether you are merging to test branch. So based on where are you merging, accordingly the approval team will be assigned to that particular merge request. Okay, okay. So as I, as I was talking about it, so till here you are ready for the deployment. Now, if you are deploying to dev environment, generally we don't need, we don't need if, if this is a dev, we don't need approval generally. Okay, in I don't know other uh, clients, but. For my clients, for the dev environments, I don't need any approval. Okay, I am the boss for that. For the QA and for production, definitely we need approval. Okay, so that approval process will be running over here in this part. Okay, so once the approval is done, then based on the approval results, this code will get deployed to your respective environment through 
same goes for the, the product launch. Okay, so this is all together the flow of your CI CD pipeline. Okay, so somewhere, so I'm I'm missing here where I can where I can Slack channel for complete pipeline. Here for the complete pipeline, global level you can you can integrate your Slack channel. So wherever you want to send the notifications, this Slack channel, you know, um, uh, over here. Notification will be sent for each. If your unit testing is failing, that result will be notified. If your indication test is failing, deployment is successful, fail, all this will be notified via Slack channel. So globally, we'll we'll integrate this Slack channel. Okay. Okay. So yeah, based on that, again, one more thing is uh, we can do the tagging also. So for example, right. So once this build is done, right. For each build, we can tag. So for verification. If you want to verify, right, whether the correct build jar is getting deployed or not, so you can do the tagging also. Your jars, that jar, you can see it in the platform, and you can, you can, you can, you know, confirm or verify that okay, this correct jar for the last build is getting deployed to the environment. Okay, so that you can do. Then for after every uh, step, right, there will be artifacts created, and those will be will be. Uh, in the GitLab artifact, as well as you can deploy it to the outside also. So you can have JPROC, you can have even Exchange. Exchange also, there is Exchange also can be used as a artifact repository. Okay. Uh, RT, you know, you know, if you remember, RTF is using uh, Exchange as a as an artifact repository. Okay. Whenever you're deploying for, to RTF, it first uh, uploaded and then only it will be deployed to the to your environment. Parts. So these results, right? Any unit testing result, I know load testing results or integration testing results, or even your jar, those can, be, you know, uh, at this level. So this is this is the here you get a space. Here all the results will be there. From here you can download it. Even you can see the results on your laptop. You can download it from here. Okay. Now where this this pipeline is running. This runs on one, you know, every time you get a runner. Runner is something like a, a VM machine. Okay. So you can have your own hosted runner or you can get it uh, from the GitLab. Okay. Based on, you'll get a shared runner. There are multiple versions. And you can get the Linux, you can get Windows, or you can get Mac OS. All kinds of runners are available. So whenever your pipeline triggers, right, it downloads the code. The code is actually checking out that code on this runner. So runner is the guy who is responsible for or who is responsible for providing the complete environment. So if you need a map, map installed on this guy. If you need a postman, postman will be installed on this guy. If you need a code scanner like kind of sonar queue, that will get installed on this guy. Everything will be installed on this guy only, then it will run your code. Okay. So Maven will be installed on this guy. Maven only running from here and it will be connecting via your credentials to your in your platform from there from the runner okay so any questions i'll take a pause over here anybody has any questions so yeah i don't think we have any questions at this point uh, so, so we can just move on i believe okay <clears throat> okay so yeah i was talking about a runner yeah we'll get a runner okay so basically you know if you see our GitLab uh, pipeline, right? So we will be defining cache, stages, pipeline, jobs, artifacts, runners. I was talking about all these things. I already explained this, okay, this stage. So this guy will be doing all the back lifting of your uh, job. Then we have deployment archive, which will get in, you know, uh, flowed to the artifact repository. From there, it will go to the respective, you know, uh, environment. Okay, now let's talk about the branching strategy. Generally, this this will get a little bit confused. So people get confused here, right? How things are happening. So I start with the main branch first. Okay, then I start with test and test. So this is your main branch. Okay. So let's say I have production environment, P, P environment, T environment, and D environment. Three environments generally minimum three environments will get it. So whatever code is there in the production, that code will be there in the main branch. Okay, 
This case can have test code here and development can have development, but actual code which is running in the production that will be there in the main branch. Okay. So the code which is there in the dev branch may not be there in the test or main, but this is the code generally we prefer to you know validate and check. Okay, this is the code main branch. Now, if you find any bug in the production, okay, in any bug in the production. Hotfix branch will be created for you immediately, and this is this will high priority. It has to be fixed early. So from the main branch, hotfix will be created. Okay, and the hotfix. So if you have 1.0.1 version, new version will be created 1.0.2, and then code will be fixed and it will be tested. It will be tested on test branch. Now we cannot do any testing on prod. Okay. So once you bug is fixed, you will be testing on the test branch first. You will go to test branch and test it. Now once the testing is, you feel it's it's uh, you know as per your expectation, you feel the bug has been fixed. It will get promoted to the main branch first. Okay, it will be promoted to the dev branch, and then hot fix will be deleted. Okay, it will be deleted. This branch will be there. Whatever dot branches are there. Those will be once the job is done. Those will be deleted. Okay, we have setting inside pipeline itself automatically to be deleted. Once it is merged to the you know the next environment, the branch will be deleted. Okay, that option is there in the CI3 pipeline itself. Okay, now so this is clear. Uh, main branch, hard fix branch. So within a week, the time will be within a week. We need to fix it. So sometimes it's like within a day also. If it is uh, uh, if you are losing a lot of business, right? It's like within a day. I I I give one week is too much time, but you know within a day or one day, one or two days we need to fix this. Okay. Now test branch. Okay. The test branch is generally is kind of equivalent environment of your production. Okay. If you don't generally you will be having staging environment also. Okay. If you are too rich, then you can buy four environments. Okay. So stage will be your Test and development is kind of sandbox, and this guy will be kind of production, uh, production infrastructure level environment. So let's not we don't have that. So what? So let's say you develop something and you merge it to test. Now your QA team is doing testing, right? Let's say they find a bug. So then bug fix branch will be created. Okay. So for example, you you check in the code one one zero zero. Okay. This branch will be created for one zero one, okay, and that will get first merge to your test, and then to dev, okay, and then it will go it will go to the production. So this bug has to be fixed, okay. Now, if okay, so that is that is your test. Now <clears throat> you got an enhancement, okay. This feature is generally we. We create feature branch for enhancement. Okay, so from development branch, we'll be creating feature branch, and people started you know working. So not only one feature branch. Let's say for this particular project, a project, you in your uh, you know this sprint you wanted to uh, you plan. Let's say three features has to be implemented and deliver. So three feature branches will be created. F1, F2, F3. Three developers will be started working on it. Okay, so C branches will be created from here, and everybody will be committing to that. So their respective branch, respective feature branch. Okay, they'll be checking the code here, here, here. Once they fail, right, then the feature branch. Finally, the feature branch will be merged to the dev branch, and feature branch will be deleted. Okay, so this is what happens in the GitLab branch strategy. Any questions over here? Any questions? Uh, Ashish, one question. Mm -hmm. Can can you hear me? Yeah, so, yeah, I'm able to. Uh, can you to the previous slide? Okay. Uh, so here my question is: uh, If we are uh, doing some hotfix and pushing mm -hmm. it to the develop branch back, right? So in okay. that case, if somebody is working on the feature branch 
uh, like let's say two developers are working on the feature branch. Uh, so mm -hmm. will that code be automatically uh, sent to feature branch as well, or what will happen over there? So I'll tell you that what happens when you try to commit this code to the dev branch, right? That mm -hmm. time it will tell you that when you created this feature branch, whatever state was there, now we are ahead of that state. So first you need to pull that. It will ask you that time itself. It will ask you to pull it. You, it won't allow you to check in the code. See, once you create feature branch, you don't need to worry about what is happening with the dev branch or what is happening here. Okay. Mm -hmm. You just worry about okay. your, your feature branch. The moment you're trying to merge it to your dev branch, it will, it will ask you to first pull this. And then once you pull it, right, then all the details will be pushing. Is that answer to your question? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Any more questions? Okay. Let's let's go. Now let's talk about the prerequisite. Thing, okay. So when you when you start you know start working on some project, right? You'll be creating code repository in the you know uh, for your project in the any any code repositories like GitHub or you know GitLab or Bitbucket or any any. You'll be creating first a code repository there or if it is already there then then no need to worry you will be directly creating feature branch and start working if i'm talking about the new project when you start creating new project so you need to create a groups and subgroups okay so what kind of groups and subgroups so let's say if we we are we are planning to create uh, you know uh, uh, so definitely in your com uh, company right there will be a business groups right so there will be a hr there will be a sales there will be a C4E. Now you want to create a new project related to C4E. So that project goes in this particular group. And then you will create a subgroup called, you see, this uh, kind of, you know, this is your main, main master branch, let's say. And under that, we have C4E group. And then you'll be creating subgroups under it. Now, this subgroups, now this is C4E is your main group now. And what are these subgroups? These subgroups are the approval groups, okay? Now, in this subgroups, there will be users. So there will be users assigned to this group. And these groups are responsible for approving the request. OK. So what I was talking about. <clears throat> so this C4E is your main group now. And under that, we are creating this, this group. So now, whenever I am whenever I am merging the code, so if I am merging the code to the dev branch, peer group will be responsible for that approving the request. If I'm merging the code to the test branch, QA approvals will be responsible for that. And if I'm approve, uh, if I'm merging the code to the prod branch or main branch, the prod approvals will be coming to picture. So the moment you, you place the merge request, automatically these groups will be assigned to that. So this is the prerequisite we need, okay? And then once this is this setup is ready, now you can create a project. Now the creating project also, you can have template, okay? So whenever we create a code repository, uh, we generally expect, okay, the setting.xml has to be, uh, we are expecting setting.xml has to be there. You know, we are, we are thinking, you know, uh, uh, GitLab uh, pipeline file has to be there automatically, YAML file, okay. Uh, we'll think like, okay, Postman uh, script has to be there automatically, okay. Uh, we'll think like load testing, uh, you know, script has to be there. So these are like minimum thing we should expect in the project. So we can create a template project for this. And whenever you want to create a project, you can create a project from that template. So first create the template. Okay. And that template you can use it for. So you can have for specific uh, business group, you can have specific template or you can have global template for your complete company. You can do that. Right. So create a project from the templates. If you create the project, you can see my screen here. So this will get automatically added to it. Okay. So either you can keep these files in the, in the separate folder. If you want, you can keep these files in separate folder. So this can be there in the folders and then actual code comes, right? Then that code comes after this here. Once you check in the code, you will code it with the form.xml source folder, all those things, blah, blah, blah. You can have it here. These files, you can keep it in separate. That you can mention the template itself. So once you create a project, 
from the template you will get this minimum files uh, you know added to your project automatically okay then you can add this project uh, you know uh, uh, sorry uh, create some global level variables like kind of project access token and uh, platform credentials group level you can create uh, you know so once that setup is done now you can clone this to your any point studio you can clone this repository to any point studio repository and then check in the code from there okay so you know this structure will be uniform across the projects created under c4d so i am just taking the that name because i have i am working under c4d so all the projects for c4d will be having this structure minimum structure okay so this is possible in in our gitlab now so let's jump on to the so one thing i'll talk about this approver stuff i won't be able to show you because for this we need a licensed product okay for only for this we need a licensed product so approval rules won't be there otherwise i'll show you all other things okay how to configure caching how to configure upload artifact how to configure slack channel postman load testing all those things we'll jump on to the demo part i'll take a pause so in the demo we are going to see all these things yeah i'll take a pause here if, we, if there are any questions i'll take it otherwise i'll jump on to the demo so priya any questions uh i don't see any questions ashish so far so my phone oh, should be okay. good so let's jump on so first what we'll do we'll create the any point studio project okay so this card i don't want to change anything yeah. so for for you guys already have created simple project where i have set payload and here i have hello world message okay and this code i want i want to you know check into my gitlab pipeline and then execute so i have uh, pre built mnet test cases also i have added here so if you see i have added the test cases for this flow okay which is triggering testing the flow and uh, if i run it let me see whether it's deployed already it's deployed so if you see the resource path what is there the hello is there if i run it from my postman if i drag my post if i trigger it it's giving me 200 and output okay so let's try to you know checking this code first so you can directly go from here okay so whenever now see okay before doing this now go to your gitlab folder here uh, gitlab file log into gitlab this is my trial account guys okay so if you go here you can create new project okay create a new project you can create it from the template project okay so once you create this project, once you create the project from template, this is my project. Okay. Before creating project, okay. So if you are completely new to GitLab, okay. If you are completely new to GitLab, you need to add the SSH. Okay. So if you go here, I think uh, I have somewhere. I need to check. Just a second. Yeah. So from here, from user settings, you'll find. Uh, unless you add this SSH, so how to build SSH, you can Google it here. You find somewhere. I think there in my. Okay. If you Google it, right? Uh, SSH. so you'll find how to create this okay once you create here see, these are the commands given okay clearly so once you execute these commands you'll get uh, your ssh file created over here under your user directory okay dot ssh folder you get it 
and these files will get it okay so from here you can take the public this one and uh, you can upload it to your upload it to your git account here okay so i have already done this it's there once you've done this then you'll be able to connect connect from your any point studio to your GitLab here okay so this is a prerequisite again if you're completely new to GitLab. once you do this okay once you do once you create this project what you can do you will get this git ignore file this gitlab file load testing file i have added it i'll show you what is this load testing what is this collection.json json this what is this ci underscore setting.xml these files you'll get by default because that is there in the template okay now your actual code is it's coming the form.xml and code will be there in the src, SRC folder right so from where it is coming this this code since i have checked in the code from my my any point studio so you right click here go to team and say share you you, you know uh, if you are doing first time you'll get a share option and this is the pool and push option okay so when you create this uh repository right and you made the changes till that point let's say your development branch move ahead some developer already checked in the code that means the branch you created and uh, the code you uh, clone it and the code right now in the dev branch if that is not matching right you have to do pull once you do the pull your code and the code there in the uh, development which will be equal and then you can on top of it you can add your changes so once you do that once you do this okay you will be able to see your code inside your pipeline here here all these changes you can see the initial commit i have done and now later i have made a lot of changes so so once you once you see that right your code will be uh, uploaded here okay now that is to check in the code from your any point studio to gitlab but to perform automation on your code deployment automation i'm talking about you need to make some changes to your form.xml right so let me let me introduce that first and this is this is common this is generic changes for any pipeline not only gitlab you need to add this configuration you need to add this configuration to your mma public plugin we call it sorry mmp public plugin new maven plugin okay once you add this okay all the values here right you can parameterize you can externalize okay i have just externalized this and hard coded other but base practice says everything has to be parameterized okay and all those parameters we can configure in the ci cd pipeline okay so right now i have just externalized two parameters because i don't want to show my credentials so these two things we will configure in ci cd pipeline so this code will be will be checked into my ci cd pipeline one more change when we are doing the maven uh, immunity testing there will be coverage report generated okay and your immunity will be testing how much coverage it has to be more than 90 percent okay so this parameter also has to be you know parameter so if you want to fail your uh, pipeline uh, when it is more than nine um, less than 90 or less than 80 or less than 75 based on your company standards so here we are looking for 90 percent okay so this is the change on form.xml point of view. Otherwise, these all are default. One more thing, one more change I'll do here. So when I'm running my pipeline, I want to upload my artifacts. So that artifact will be uploaded in this Maven location. And what is this Maven location? I'll show you in a minute. So this is basically your uh, API will be coming from here and this is your project ID so this artifact will be uploaded to this maven repository okay and for that there will be a repository here that's it no other changes so to uploading the artifact this is a setting we need to do we, we need to add this repository to check the coverage report of the unit you need to add this 
and to enable your code to do the deployment automation we need to add this code okay this is what the form.xml change we need to do otherwise everything will be as it is once you do this okay once you do and your code is here let me show you the form.xml which is we are talking about this is the code we are talking about this is the coverage report we, report we are talking about and then finally we are talking about this this is the API. okay so the gitlab.com the project id project id and for that there is a repository here okay hmm. now this repository id keep in mind okay so this we this this particular access right it will be given from job access token i'll show you what is that access token means this repository won't be accessible uh, without any permissions okay so we have to pass some credentials for this access in this repository okay so i'll show you where i'm giving that and anything other than that only keep in mind this one just remember this github gitlab.map now once the form.xml if you have any questions in the form.xml uh, please raise your hand or you know you can ask the question i'll try to answer that i'll take a pause let's let's take the question on form.xml if you have any questions why i did this code or what is the reason behind it any questions uh, where will we get all these plugins uh, the code which you added in the form.xml will we be getting it or uh, where shall we See. refer yeah, this code is already available on the Mules of documentation. You don't need to mug up anything, okay? This will be automatically generated for you, okay? So once you create, okay, yes. Once you create, you know, EMU test cases for you, right? The form.xml will be changed, okay? And then you can configure according to your. So this, this, this part only. Maybe, maybe if you guys you want, because this is my private repository. I cannot. Or maybe I can put it in the GitHub, and from there you can access. And after the after the session, maybe I'll put this code in GitHub repository. But the yeah, I can I can do that. No problem. But this code will be generated automatically for you. Few things we need to here and there we need to configure that. Okay. okay. The, this value I I told right 90. This is not fixed. Yeah. You can make it 80, okay. 75 based on your company standards. The only thing I have added is this one. Uh, this one I have added. Okay. To upload the artifact. If you don't want to upload it, we don't need this. Okay. Keep in mind. Is if this for the artifact trick? Yeah, artifact. Yes. This is for the artifact. Okay. 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 So this distribution management. If you want to upload anything, right? Even if you want to upload to exchange, you need to add distribution management. If you want to upload any external JPROG or Artifact repository to add this distribution management tag in your mule sort. Ah, uh, sorry, in your form.xml. Okay. Sure. Thank you. Okay. So, any questions? more questions? Uh, yes. Yeah. Quick. Go ahead. Uh, there is two options we have. Uh, please go down where you have uh, added your uh, artifact tree repository part. Mm -hmm. We have two things, you know, snapshot repository and this repository. Mm -hmm. What does it mean, a snapshot repository here? Uh, I never used it, but by name, uh, I'm, I'm not sure whether it's the correct answer. Snapshot is basically like, you know, if you wanted to, uh, you know, before uploading, right? Before uploading the uh, changes, what was the state, right? Not sure, but I'll take it as a as a assignment. I never use this snapshot repository since it was yeah, because I see that mm -hmm. it's automatically correct, correct. generated for each and uh, these things. Yes, yes might yes. be it will help uh, while redeploying. Might be they are not yes, snapshot doing... version of the jar file might be stored. I guess. Yeah, okay. Yeah, even yeah. so, even, yeah. They, they... Hmm. yeah. Good question, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Please, please, please contribute. They they can easily refer it they will not uh, mm -hmm. uh, they will not uh, 
put it again that particular uh, artifacts again they will pick it as a snapshot and then uh, build it so i think yeah so whenever there is a production issue right once you do the latest uh, you know uh, the deployment and if something fails right we take the jar from our artifact repository but i am not sure that whether this will be come into picture okay anyway we'll take this as a you know assignment i'll also try to figure out okay okay any more questions yeah i am i didn't notice this okay yeah. and one more thing uh, mm -hmm. even though we have provided the uh, others uh, gitlib for repository but still we have a uh, mule soft uh, what is say exchange repository to put that artifact right uh yeah but then then you need to give same same here in description management where you want to upload right now we are uploading to gitlab uh, uh, gitlab maven here you need to give exchange url then your jar will be uploaded to the exchange that's it so that, that is the only place uh, for the artifactory we have to put the repository name and then automatically get uh, uploaded there right yeah so this is the url you need to change for your repository whether you want to use artifactory or exchange or jfrog or whatever you need to you know configure here in the distribution but, manager but in by default we'll get it uh, exchange one right here right and the this distribution or not distribution tag first of all it won't get it by default right it won't be there correct so you, for you example, need to take it hmm. yeah for example if we deploy our application first time mm -hmm. uh, and uh, on the cloud uh, so in the on the back end they are putting uh, they are having that repository right or not in exchange no 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 in no no it won't only for rtf it will get be it will upload it only for rtf in RTF. RTF. okay in rtf also we have to mention that distribution management tag yes then no no no, no. we don't need to what we don't need to rtf by default it does okay it first if you see csd pipeline of the rtf duly goes first to the exchange upload that rtf over there and from there it will refer so but if that is mm -hmm. that upload fails no your deployment will fail it won't deploy yeah, to I, your uh, mm. it. but why this discrimination happen with this cloud hub why they are not storing that uh, artifact cloud hub? Then, yeah no for cloud hub we have backup we have we our repository is getting stored somewhere i think in the dynamo db or somewhere not sure but in the cloud hub we have stored it for rtf we they don't have stored it so rtf for so rtf is referring exchange okay for all the assets rtf is referring to exchange and from exchange you will get the uh, deployment archives but the thing is if you are not mentioning mm -hmm. the distribution management for rtf deployment although rtf it is different uh, uh, concept but just to just have a word on that like we are if you are mm -hmm. not mentioning here then how it is uh, deployed to our exchange no exchange see here once you give uh in the configuration here you will pass the url right uh default so cloud, if you are seeing cloud of deployment right here right so you are right i think yes in rtf distribution management has to be there yes correct i also agree with that one yeah. in rtf this has to be there and i think uh, might be by by default also might be in the reverse case like by default mm -hmm. uh, all the applications are registered into the uh, exchange only in you case of put, uh, this, in case of uh, cloud hub also by default that is the default behavior i believe no 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 in case of cloud hub it won't go to the exchange okay that is okay. 200% sure okay only for rtf the uh, RT, deployment archives will be uploaded to the exchange first and from then deployment will happen okay okay Thank you. So, in case of RTF, this distribution management has to be there. I am little, little because when you do RTF, right? Here you need to mention the uh, details, mm -hmm. and here we are not giving. In case of RTF, we don't give any point dot mulesoft dot com. The moment you say cloud hub, right? By default, right. the URL will be any point dot mulesoft dot com. Correct. You don't need to pass that URL right here. But in case of RTF and standalone, you need to give that explicitly, not any point at wherever wherever your deployment server is. 
Right. In case of standalone, you'll be standalone. In case of RTF, you're RTF, right? Right. Please go down. I see one more uh, exchange URL there somewhere. We have exchange yeah. repository URL. Uh, yeah. Where it is? We don't. We don't have. Okay. No. Uh, this, this, one, this one. This yeah, this one. Yeah. This one. Any point exchange to here. Yeah. This one. This is the. Uh, this is to download the the dependencies, right? Whenever you need a dependencies, those will be downloaded from here. Okay. So yeah. when you want to build something, you need dependencies, right? Those will be downloaded from here. Okay. So we uh, do we need this one also? The below one, little like here. This one. Yeah. The second yeah. one. Yeah. This is to connect. So this is to download. This is to connect. This is for uploading to your artifact, right? This is we are uploading to. This is to uploading to the uh, GitLab Maven, and and this one. I believe distribution is for the upload one. Yeah. Okay. Correct. Correct. This one is for upload, mm. and this one is for if you need anything in the GitLab pipeline. I think okay. This is uh, actually whenever you create, you know, uh, runner, right? So when I I show you this one, okay. So whenever you the runner is getting generated, right? So that will create. Uh, this is this is the URL. This is the environment URL will get generated, and this is the project name. The project ID will be created, and all these Maven repositories. So on the you know GitLab Python also all the dependencies will be downloaded, right? This is to download on your .m2 folder. This is to download on your um, runner. Okay. Okay, and okay. then yeah, this is to upload. This distribution management is clear, right? This is to upload, and we are not sure about this map short repository. But but in the beginning, we are not doing any download apart from uh, this uh, GitLab uh, Maven, right? You are not downloading it. No, when you are when you are checking out the code, right? Now see, when you are checking out the code, yeah. let me let me show you the let me show you the GitLab pipeline. Now since you are asking, I just I was about to go to that pipeline. See here. So when when you are you what what it does when the job starts, right? Whenever uh, uh, whenever there is a checking on your main branch, this is only refer main branch. So if there is any checking on main branch, what it does, whatever this image, this is Docker image created environment, right? On this environment, your code will be downloaded. So when the code is downloaded, it needs dependencies, right? Maven dependencies to build that code. All those dependencies will be downloaded to this directory, right? Dot into directory. This dot into directory on this server, not on our local. This is not. This is somewhere, right, in the cl cloud. And whatever you are building, those will go to target folder. Whatever dependencies are getting downloaded, those are getting downloaded in .m2 folder here. And I am saying that this has to be cached. So the cache is coming from this. So all these folders will be, you know, always validated for cache. Target also and .m2 repository also. And all this will be related to the form .m2 repository. <clears throat> Okay. All right. Okay. So next one, I was talking about. I, I'll jump onto that pipeline also. But before that, okay. So I hope the form dot XML. I was able to answer the questions, but few questions I'll take it as assignment. Now I'll talk about the collection dot JSON and load testing dot JMS. So these two things are for my uh, testing the Postman and testing the load. Okay. So in the collection dot JSON, what I'm doing, I'm actually triggering my API. I'll show you that. I have built the collection here. So in one case, I'm just so I am deploying the application with this name now, and this is the URL. When I'm triggering this URL, I'm just checking what is the status code. So I have written some test cases here, and I'll just maximize it. And I'm checking 
whether my status code is having 200 or not okay that is the one test second test i'm doing is what my body is returning in the response so it has to map match with hello world okay so right now if i trigger this now right now this is not deployed so it won't be connect once this is deployed in c or anyway my cicd pipeline itself will execute it so both the things will be tested while running the pipeline so this is the collection.json based on your requirement you can write here as complex as your requirement is you can add keep on adding it and you want to test it so this is what collection.json i have in my pipeline so this one if i open it you will be able to see the same thing okay so you can see here i am trying to test 200 okay and the second time again i am triggering and this time i am trying to test the local body okay this one test i am doing second one is i am trying to trigger my application hope i think i am triggering it 10 times so 10 times within a loop of one uh, minute i guess one minute or uh, i don't know but 10 times i'm triggering parallel okay this application where is the url this is the url i'm triggering in 10 threads parallel okay and this is jmeter jmeter uh, script i'm trying to check whether within a second is able to handle 10 request or not so this is my load testing script i may you can add it in the, in, a, in a folder also based on that you can give the path to your so load testing collection.json and form.xml now finally we have something called setting.xml everybody is aware of this right everybody is aware of this only thing i was telling you right gitlab hyphen maven this is you know need a job token to execute the to uh, you know while uploading it it needs the job token to upload that authorize it authenticate then only it will upload the artifact okay so this is the only thing and we know that right this is my platform credentials to connect exchange i need that okay so this is for exchange this is for git lab man this only two things i have added in setting the exchange so far on this files okay. ashish we have one question i think this is related to again form mm -hmm. file only so if any more is asking okay form file line number 149 says line number line 19, number so for the job 119 maybe it's in the one, one, studio one, one, or i'm not studio. sure whether it is here uh you are showing one. that bomb dot xml right? uh it okay. says you know refer the jar file location while doing ci cd process so it's asking will jar file taken automatically from their ci cd process so that is the question okay so once you build the jar right once you build the jar you will be you will be building so let's say i'll go back to the pipeline again so in my pipeline right now i have only one job okay so i have only one job which is deploy and this deploy job only deploying to my main branch like this there will be a three two more job one to deploy to dev environment one to deploy to test environment when we are deploying to dev environment that time itself the jar will be built and that jar will be uploaded to the uh, artifact location uh, something with this command okay so this once the jar is built the test job also will be using same jar and get that download jar code okay i have not added it here so i told you right we have apis to download that jar so we can download that jar from maven artifact repository so only once will be building the jar other jobs will be downloaded in the same jar from there okay is that the answer to the question who you are asked that question so, that the answer i, I believe uh, kanimuri is asked that question actually so i hope uh, she can to yeah so from that location test also will be referring the jar and the prod also will be referring the jar okay both the guys we are not going to build that jar again because the best best practice or standard says if we have deployed the jar on dev environment the same jar has to be deployed on test also has to be deployed on prod also 
without any code change or without any in you know build change also and the same jar has to be deployed in Jupyter. Yeah, thanks Ashish. I think hope uh, anybody that answered your question, so we can move forward. Okay. Well. Yeah, I think I have done with all these files. Okay, so if you have any more questions, let me know. Everybody is aware of this new hyphen artifact jar. Nothing to do with our CI/CD pipeline. Read dot md. Nothing to do with this. Uh, source code is you know we'll be having here MNT test cases as well as our code. Okay, now let's go ahead and discuss our CI/CD pipeline, which is our main start. Okay. Now in so to <clears throat> now we'll be using to create environment. Basically, to create an environment, we'll be using one Docker image. That Docker image is nothing but so this is standard. It will give you JDK 11 environments and Maven 3.6. With this, it will build the uh, on the GitLab runner. Okay. So I told you, right? GitLab, any any build tool, they are not doing any magic. They need Java and Maven. Without that, they won't do, they won't understand what is this code, this Maven commands, unless they have this Maven and JDK installed. Okay. Okay, so that's the first thing. It will gen, it will create or it will give you environment where you can run the scripts, you, where you can you uh, you can run the Maven commands, you can run the Java code. Okay, so that will be done by this Docker image. Now, whenever I'm running this job, okay, I don't want to download the Maven dependencies again and again because it will take a lot of time. So, my key will be for cache. My key will be the hash value of my form.xml content. So whatever content I have in form.xml, the hash value will be created from that and that will become a key. That will become a key of my cache. Any questions here? So that will become a key. If you don't change form.xml, you don't need to download the dependencies again and again. Okay. Now, so what will be the what will be cache values? Those will be here in the dot m2 repository and the target port. Okay. Now, what I have done, I have created one global variable here because I'm repeating this step, this this part in every command. So instead of writing that in every every command, I have created one variable, and this 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 variable. I am referring this Maven CLI options. I am referring everywhere now. See here. So first, I am running MVNU test test cases. So you can see that Maven command very simple. MVN clean test, and then I am referring setting.xml. I am referring the the cache while running you know MVNU test cases. You don't need this username and password. Okay, but since it is getting used, so I have created a common variable. Even if you pass the username and password, doesn't matter. So first, your MNU test case will be run. If it is successful, then you are building the jar and uploading it to the artifact repository. How? So I have a profile in my com.xml that will be used. And I'm skipping now test because I already ran here. I don't want to waste time in running those uh, unit test case again. Simple with these options. I'm uploading the jar to my okay. Now, once the jar is built, now I am using deploy to clouder. So now this jar is available in my same job, same location, target folder. So I'm saying, okay, can you do the deployment? Ambient colon deployment. And I'm passing where is my artifact? Find command. I am just hard coding this name. You should not do it. We should use the build name here because right now my code repository name and my project name is not same. That's the reason I hard coded here. This one. My my project name. If I go here, my project name is CICD hyphen using hyphen GitLab hyphen ultimate. That's the reason. It's a problem. Okay. Otherwise, I could have used project name here simply. Project name star dot jar. That's it. Okay. Why I'm hard coding it? I gave the reason for hard coding. This is not a good way of doing it. Okay. Okay. Then get the so let's say there are multiple jars. Take the head minus one, the top one. Okay. 
and now we are seeing mule deploy this guy will deploy to cloud if you don't pass this your deployment won't go to the cloud okay and then finally we are saying skip the test and final is the i'm using setting.xml now i need platform user and password so that is what i'm doing here okay now once my deployment is done whatever is there right this will be and this are script shell script you can run this maven command conditionally you can write shell script here literally you can write the script here shell script okay and this will be executed this complete part will be executed only when if anything is checking anything is changing on main branch you can have multiple branches here. you can have main branch you can have dev branch you can have test branch accordingly you can write your job right now my job is only responsible for main branch Okay, I don't have any other branch. Now, once your deployment is done successfully, then only I can do the load test and postman test, right? So, if you write deploy and load test and postman test like this without this, just ignore this part right now. If I don't write this needs colon this one, what is the importance of this? I'll tell you. All the jobs will be running parallel. Without deployment, how can you test the load, right? You cannot. So this needs will stop this, or it will say, wait till this job successfully executed. Then only this load test will execute. So that is what I'm saying. In, in this needs, right, I can do comma separated all the jobs name, so that till those jobs are done, this load test is not going to execute. Okay, so the needs will help you. To, you know keep eye on this guy once it's successfully done then only this load test will be executed if this fails this load test and postman is skipped it will get skipped okay it won't, it's not going to get executed if this is deployment is still why it will run right no automatically this is a behavior if it fails load test will be skipped now let's say this is successfully deployed my code is deployed to this maven unit test case is successful uh, artifact is uploaded to the, the uh, repository successfully and then I have deployed to cloud. <clears throat> now, this load test will be using JMeter. Okay, so there is an image, Docker image again. I will be using this Docker image. Then this Docker image will be, you know, uh, will be helpful to run my load testing dot JMS. This one. So I showed you right what this file has. This file has execute this deployed application 10 times. And the, all the results, result log will be here, and results will be uploaded to this folder. Whether those uh, whether all the threads will be executed successfully or not, those things will be there. Okay. Now this result will be uploaded to the artifact repository. I'll, I'll show you where, where to find this artifact or whatever. I know artifact generated by these guys where to find it so where to find this jar where to find this report.html and report.html uh, report okay now once this load testing is successfully done so again mix is here right so these guys depending on this guy then these guys depending on this guy so once the load test is done successfully i can do this thing uh, load test and postman test i can say depend on deploy that i can do but i'm saying that okay execute this first and then use the postman there is no relation between these two guys okay so i can correct this instead of load test i can say deploy so once the deployment is done these two job can run parallel load load testing and postman testing can happen parallel so if you have to run postman test again we have a docker image called postman slash new man so this new man software will be will be uh, installed on this machine okay the runner it will check first a new man version if it is not there it will get installed okay then new man run command will be running and this is the collection.json where i am testing the status code and the body once this is executed the report.html file will be created i will show you that file how it looks it will generate the report okay so what is the the output of the test results or test cases okay 
So this all will be running on main, main. Okay. And I'm saying always run. Okay. Even if you fail, run rate the reports in any case. Any questions on this CICD pipeline? Any questions? Yeah, I think we are good to go. Okay. So right now, what I, I can do? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry to disturb you. Yeah, How we get the image image path basically? Like uh, you have a image. Like how we got this image this, path? This one will come by default. Once you say create CICD pipeline, you'll get it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. this one, mm -hmm. this one you can find. You can Google it. Okay. We, there are multiple this not only this docker image you can use we have multiple docker image available okay okay so it's, it will not generate uh, by default we have to no no postman it. and load testing won't get by default generated this will get generated mm -hmm. here cache won't be get generated this is added by me okay you added by me all these things you will get simple script okay here okay so they are using docker repo right Everywhere it talks about they where we have it. Docker. Okay. Docker, Thank Docker you. image, Docker image. Okay, so now right. for code scanning, right? I was telling you code scan, right? So for that, uh, sonar cube we can use. Okay, but for that you need to have your local runner. You cannot run on shared runner. Okay, so because you'll be down, you'll be installing uh, they I I I Sonar Cube SaaS application is not available till now. Okay, so Sonar Cube you have to scan, right? It has to be locally installed and then server has to be running on your system. So the runner has to be running on your system. Right now it's running in somewhere cloud, right? So we don't have, but workaround is there for that. Okay, so in the Maven itself, there is plugin. I forgot, I maybe later I can share that. So there is a, there is a Maven plugin, okay, uh, created and it's there in the Maven. That we can use that will do a, a static code scanning for us. Okay. And that Maven command, we can run it from here. Validate command. MVN mule colon validate. That will run that dependency, that plugin, and it will scan our code. So that dependency we need to add in our form That's it. Nothing else. So there is a workaround for Sonar Cube. So we can use that. That will be more stable. Okay. No, yeah. Let's go ahead and run it. Okay. If if you people don't have any questions, I can go ahead and run it. And any questions? Okay. Yeah. Few more things. Okay. Two things are pending. Let me let me go ahead and finish those before running it. So if you go to the settings here, okay. First thing, where we can find the jar, the jar over here. This is the package and registry here. You can find it with the latest. So let's delete. Let me show you first what content will be there. See here. Your jar file got created here. Okay. This is one week ago. I ran it. So what we can do first delete it. Okay. So let's see whether it's getting created or not. So it's clean now. Our package repository is clean. Now I show you one thing. First, I'll show you web books okay <clears throat> mm, not this one first let me check what i said i was thinking of showing you okay so in the combat xml we have we have externalized two variables right we need to create those variables here platform underscore password platform underscore user where we are creating it we are creating at repository level these are the variables we can create here. Okay. And this variable in a form.xml uh, in our pipeline, simple dot variables. Okay, so here is my files files. So if I go here, send the pipeline. See here at the rate that variable name. That's it. It will be used here. Okay, both the variables I'm using. That is the one thing. Second thing is, I showed you where we can find the package repository. Only jar we can find it there. And just a second. And those results, right? 
our postman results and our load testing results, you can find it here in this download. Okay. Beside your code, you'll find load test and postman test results. So we'll run it and we'll see today's latest results. Okay. Yeah. I don't want to see this old results. Now that is second thing. Third thing is CICD. Uh, not that. Settings and integration. So in this integration, we can configure our Slack notification. Okay, so I have created one workspace here for for, for this uh, CICD pipeline meetup. So you can find this incoming webhook notification here whenever there is any code change happen. Whenever you run the uh, your uh, pipeline, whether it's successful or not, you find all those notifications. Sometimes failed, that notification also you'll get it. And along with this notification, you'll get an email also in your mailbox. Okay. So this is Slack notification, always useful, right? So how to configure this? In the integration, the Slack notification will be there in down here. Okay. Since I have configured it. It's coming here. Now here, very, very simple. You just need to get the webhook URL. And where to find this webhook URL? Again, it's very easy. Go to your Slack channel. Okay, go to your workspace.com. And here, go to incoming webhooks. Here, you'll get this webhook URL. And when, you know, before getting this URL, you need to select, okay? where you want to in which channel you want to post the those notifications so i said stack merge that is my uh, channel name so stack merge and then that's it you need to give that webhook url here save the changes okay so this is global level i have configured the slack and i have selected the channel in that channel you will see all the notifications related to this pipeline now that is what all we need. Now let's go to the CICD pipeline and say run it manually. So some we'll see we we'll run manually also, and we'll see if the code it will whether it's running or not. Okay, so right now I can do that if you want me to change something in where I can change. I can I cannot change the bomb protection. Mm -hmm. yeah. I can go to uh, main resources not here. Main mule in this XML say I have some message here. Where is that message? Say payload. So I say hello world from how is it? I say hello Kochi. Okay. Oh, if I give this, then my uh, cannot do because my postman and my load testing, my postman script will fail because it's expecting this guy. Okay, I cannot change this. You got it, right? Uh, I cannot change this. So, you can just cut off and I cannot do this. I'll change something. It's run manually. What's wrong? Yes, we'll, we'll first run it manually and then we'll make some changes to the code. Okay, is that fine? Guys? Yeah, maybe listener name or some any component name you can change in the XML. Compo component name, okay, okay, okay. Display name, yeah, display, yeah, display, display name. name. Yeah, good, 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 good point. You can go ahead and change that. Sometime, edit it. Oh, please help me. So, which one I should change? Flow name I cannot change. Display name, where it is? Where it is? 
doc name can i change doc HTTP name listener. yeah 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 instead of listener you can http listener config is there right i mean yeah, yeah. this one right yeah yeah you can see yeah okay let's go ahead and go ahead and do the commit commit changes it will trigger our pipeline now see this file we have updated now if i go to my pipeline pipelines Did trigger how okay. come yeah it's triggered i can see the pop-up message here okay now it's triggered so if we go here i see you saw the notification here right see this file got updated by this person okay and my team if you have team members here and this is the change tag now with this tag now we'll get all the results okay so jar file also we'll find it here with this tag now we'll identify this is the change triggered my CHD pipeline with this tag my jar will be created all the results will be with this so it's triggered now my deploy job is getting executed to see the docker image this is preparing the environment now <clears throat> so this is lab runner, I will get it. And this is shared runner, okay? This is you can see here. I share it. Now it's running. It will take some time, guys. Okay. If my cache is used, let me say check if the cache is used. Let me start it. And I'm putting the cache. Okay. It's taking it from the cache. That's a change form dot XM. Now my amenity is getting executed. Yeah, meanwhile, if you have any questions, I can take it. Yes. Any questions? So there are no errors. Amenities is a ran successfully. Now uploading the artifact okay this is the command we are executing the artifact will get uploaded so let's see going to my any point platform let's see and this is deployed here not yet no it's getting deployed now see there's no 439 right it's getting deployed and it's, it is getting deployed okay now so it's getting deployed means my my postman and load testing is still pending but my jar got built let me check whether the jar is uploaded here or not see here a15 this is what a15 7213b in my Slack channel, see this is what you can find the jar here, and this is the jar is getting used for deploying. Okay, see here down to the day. See jar, this one one minute ago, right? Oh, this, this part is clear now. Once the Deployment is done. I'll go back to my pipeline. <clears throat> Still, my deployment is going on. It will take some time, guys. Okay. Yeah. Any more questions? I can take questions now. It will get deployed. So can we uh, mask GitLab variables? Uh, is that option available? Mask what GitLab values we are variable values. Yeah, it's mask only, right? There. Yeah. You want me to show again? 
but yeah okay uh settings csd or csd uh oh, come on come on setting my csd these are mask only right okay yeah values are mask but so by default you, you can you can reveal the values also okay i don't want to do that okay. but you cannot see like this okay okay and i was talking about some groups right we can create a groups we can assign this merge request are there right so this you can create a merge request here and based on the where are you create for which branch you are creating based on that approval group you be assigned you can write the approval rules how many approvals required all those things but those are not possible with a trial account okay so you need to buy the license for this then only you'll be able to do that that's the only thing pending from my side i have explained in the slides but i cannot show the demo okay anything else else here you want to see i can okay if i okay then so here you can see merge request option is there but approval rule option is not there okay that option will come here and uh, once uh, you buy the license mm, what is the status of my pipeline yeah it's deployed has passed successful see notification i received second notification i received which is for successful now if i go to my pipeline is passed so see here load test and postman test has run successfully all three now if i go to my repository files here you can download the results of your load test download it first if you go here maybe i will download it here on the desktop itself and go ahead and download other also so second one I go to zip file extract here now you open it test user folder is there i will get it and if you open this index.html and xml or uh, html see here so hello world api we have triggered we obtain samples average time is this minimum is this maximum is this all the users there are no errors okay all the charts everything will be so to put everything is generated here okay so this is and you can see this is this is latest one only 26 see and this 12 12 i don't know uh, this is running in some time other time zone that's why i'm showing that time but it's 26 okay then uh, if i open this this one you can extract it so here it there is a report.html here see here uh, we we trigger this url status code is 200 pass then we tested the body body also matching and pass both tests are successfully executed and here also time you can see to this time okay two tests scripts are there all assertion and no fail okay yeah if you have any questions let me know or from my side i am done guys so ashish one question again from kanimuri he is requested what is the use of git ignore file git ignore file you can uh, mention there that target folder and all those things you don't want you know let me there is my file oh, there is my files see here you can mention what all you don't want okay so here you can see you can whatever git you know when you check in code right it will ignore whenever you check in the code from your uh, uh, any point studio right there will be a target folder 
there will be multiple files there you don't want those files okay so those things you can mention here okay see here target folder is key see nothing from the target folder will be checked into your code repository you don't want right target folder is not at a required that is ignore file you can mention the what you want <clears throat> Uh, all dot think, plus uh, Ashish, uh, regarding i mean postman scripts right is it recommended to add in gitlab because here we are using a static value so it is validating what if the value is continuously changing the response which, which uh, value postman yeah postman, yeah. yeah yeah that's what i'm saying right you can externalize okay whatever code we are seeing here right it, it has to be externalized so here right and i was showing you i got your point but yeah. when you are writing here test case right you just write here, here, right? Yeah. Yeah. Your your complete URL has to be. Uh, okay. Okay. Got it. Yeah. yeah. Here I have put it right for my my testing. I have hard put it. But this has to okay. come from your uh, GitLab pipeline. Right. Right. Got it. Yeah. Variables. Yeah. Okay. And I also in it. this uh, yeah. variable, right? Do we have to maintain the property files because even we can set all the uh, values as a variables only here. For example, different different environment, I can have different different variables. Mm. Do we need to have a property files uh, or would, uh, or directly we can configure the variables, which is recommended here? Mm. Yeah, property file always recommended because uh, that will minimize your job. Okay, variables, uh, you know, sometime. You know, maintaining variables is hard, man. Okay, we need to keep uh, properly. Okay, property files okay. is always good. <clears throat> okay, yeah. Thank sometimes you. we need to. Yeah. Sometimes we need to use any file property files also. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Ashish. Any more questions, guys? Supriya, uh, that's all from yeah, my side. I, 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 yes, exactly, Ashish. Thank you so much. I don't think so. There are any other questions. Uh, so Just we can uh, move ahead and go. Just a second, Supriya. Okay, Just a okay. second. Okay. So okay. we have deployed our code on our, our uh, cloud, right? So I definitely I'll get this UI. Okay. So if I trigger it now, it should work perfectly fine. See? So this is work, work, um, working fine. And you can check the results also here. Test results is also happening. So that means uh, I can say that the deployment done successfully. Okay, that's it. Now over to you, Supriya. Uh, yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you, Ashish, mm -hmm. and thank you everybody whoever has attended. So we'll just do a trivia quiz very quickly. Uh, Sandeep? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are ready with that. Yeah. So, so yeah. for the trivia quiz, uh, look in the question properly. And then there will be few options. And you just have to get one correct. Whoever gives my saying. first correct answer, whoever will give you the first correct answer will, um, uh, you know, win this uh, uh, trivia round. And there will be three such a questions. And everybody yeah. has to send me an email ID, like whoever is winning. We'll just announce a name. And you guys have to send the email ID. Thank you. Yes. So basically, I'll be putting the question in the general section of chat section. So please watch it. So I'm going to put the right, first question right now. OK, so please uh, watch be everyone watching that. Uh, the, watch the chat, this space, yeah. Chat space. So here is the first question. OK, so. So hotfix branch should be created from developer. Is it a true statement or a false statement? So I can see the first uh, correct answer has come from Mahalakshmi. Uh, it is actually false. So the first answer has come from Mahalakshmi uh, Manohar. Can you please send me uh, your email ID quickly? Yeah. Sorry, whoever has answered true, that's a wrong answer. False is the correct answer. Thank you, Mahalakshmi. Yes, sir, Sandeep, we can move ahead and put the second question. Yeah, okay, one second. Let me copy your email ID. Okay, so we are going to put the next question now. Yes. Okay, please uh, be watching. So I will just draw a line here just to you know identify the next question. So this is going to be the next question. Uh, the question two is going to be who is controlling 
the release management and uh, you know and these are the options here Okay, so three yeah, options so are there. You can see the B first answered by Shivraj Patil. So B is Artifact the right. repository is the right answer, and Shivraj Patil has given the right answer. Shivraj, can you please send the email? Yeah, sure, sure. I'll send it. So once you've added the email ID, I'll just move on with the next question. Yes, yes, sure. Shivraj, please be quick. Yeah, sure. okay thank you yes copied yes and next okay so this is going to be the last question okay so the question is this uh, so which of the following version is not backward compatible with 1.0.0 is not a is not backward compatible come on guys <laughs> yeah gazanan you're Gaza, right gazanan yes please oh man i was waiting for nobody's giving the answer then i did <laughs> i was not giving the answer but then again i thought i have to get yeah, yeah. Okay. share your email id gazanan gazanan please share your email id and i request everybody to please come on the video just so that we can click one good picture of all of us together yeah before before moving moving forward that image right guys whoever own right do you have account with the training training.mutual.com if you don't have create it now second second restriction is if you within a month last 30 days if you own any voucher you are not going to get okay that is the Azanan, can you send your email id please yeah thinking will they give me the voucher why what happened because i was a speaker at the uh, uh, 5th march not only sharan they will give okay so gazanan then okay. everybody i would just like to clarify few things over the voucher i understand where this mm. is coming from but what happens is when everybody is nominating to the training, okay, Mulesoft should have a, a you know, plan to conduct that training, okay. So the day they are going to conduct the training, you will get the emails. Uh, so this is something which I have also gone through. There were times when, uh, you know, I was a speaker, sometimes I was a trivia winner and submitting the email, submitting the forms and we just have to wait for a long time to get that training. This is right, but it's not like that. It is not getting considered. So I think uh, send your email ID. We will try our best and uh, yeah, thanks, good uh, follow ups. Yeah. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. One yeah. question I see I just out of curiosity. Uh, like we have a GitHub now, GitLib now and others other repository now, right? So what is the be what difference we have all these uh, uh, like code uh, versioning uh, repository? So what do you recommend is Git uh, GitHub we have to use, GitLab we have to go. Or just, you're uh, talking on mute, I see. Sorry, but sorry. OK, so client perspective, definitely it has to be very secure highly available and scalable that is the main minimum requirement okay whoever mm -hmm. use and finally whoever is cheaper client perspective that is the more important part. i i i i work for multiple clients mm -hmm. i have given the you know matrix comparison matrix for all three uh bitbucket gitlab and you know github they have selected which okay. one you know which one is cheaper okay so yes. that's oh, again the yeah parameter of up to clients right? and uh, what's much, for, uh, uh, if go ahead hello yeah yeah we are able to hear you am i audible am i audible yes yes yeah, yes. yeah i was go saying ahead. that uh, ashish is right you know sometimes client will see what is a budget and they'll go for a cheap and also there's one factor that what is they are uh, using from the uh, you know, they have used and they have got a confidence. 
uh, on the project. So that's mm -hmm. something they'll go for. There where they won't uh, see the prizes, but uh, these two things are, are mattering, like price and one other is experience. That if they have successfully delivered the project using GitLab or GitHub or something else, then they would like to go for that. So that's, mm -hmm. that's, that's from where the mentality comes. Yeah, fine, right, I think. Right. Uh, and one more thing. Yes. Yeah, one more thing is mostly the people are using Jenkins only. So GitHub and GitLab, uh, the pipeline is not really is, uh, you know, uh, mostly used, but they mm -hmm. have a separate uh, pipelines to handle it. So th that is the only point of view, because right now as a developer, we have a couple of options, but uh, when come to uh, the point is which one we have to choose, we have to be very, uh, you know, uh, specific, like if we have a matrix like that, which one mm -hmm. we have to choose as per the client, mm -hmm. that is the good. That is the only point I have to highlight, like uh, what will be the best way to choose it. Yes, yes. See, Correct. if you go for the Jenkins, you. right, you have a lot of lot of options. You can you can integrate with Sonar Cube there easily. Okay, GitLab is a yes. SaaS based application, so but the advantage is you are getting code repository here itself and your your pipeline here itself. So you don't need to pay for two different uh, you know systems. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now, if uh, anybody like is comfortable sharing the video, thanks, Francis. Please, guys, come on. I want to go, not have lunch, but have a good tea. <laughs> it's it's five p.m. in India. How about how about me, Supriya? How about me? <laughs> Wait, wait, I'm, I'm gonna give a speech. So, <laughs> wait, I'm just uh, capturing the <laughs> picture. Yeah, so Ashish, I think um, you are a great human. Mm -hmm. What else <laughs> I can huh? say? Oh, I mean, it takes, uh, yeah, it takes a lot of energy uh, to, you know, deliver mm -hmm. sessions from the morning. And I just want to thank you a lot. Uh, because it was really, um, you know, a useful sessions. There were quite a few concepts which I was confused about and you have clarified that. So thank you so much. And thank you everybody for attending. And I would just uh, request you to give us a feedback and also the topics you want to see in the further upcoming sessions. We are really analyzing on that and we are only keeping such a topics. So, uh, yeah, I think. Anything else from anybody? She uh, is a superman. <laughs> Who is talking? We have a <laughs> this is Gajanand again. Gajanand is joining your session Superman. in the morning. Mm -hmm. Ashish is a superman. He is super busy with YouTube. He is super busy everywhere. He can see Ashish. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, Thank both sessions Ashish. today, Ashish, have been brilliant. Yes. Thank you, Francis. See, Ashish, now do you the, think, uh, uh, you know, th this is what is your prizes? <laughs> No, 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 you, you, no, 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 I, I was not expecting this. You <laughs> said, right, you didn't have lunch, you didn't have, you just have tea and all. That context I was asking, not this one. I, I know that people are uh, contributing. Yeah, but we are in the different uh, cities, you know? otherwise I would have invited you. Uh, but we are in the separate cities in India. <laughs> so right okay. now let's uh, hold on to the thoughts. Uh, but yeah, thank you so yeah, much. Yeah. And everybody. And we've been uh, at, uh, even yeah, I have so attended one session with uh, Asis Pardi. Mm -hmm. with, okay, uh, this is Sham speaking. Yeah. Alok Pragma. Yeah. Alok Agdawal on News of the Production Ready Networks, I think. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Attended. I mean, oh, I was yeah, sorry. Mm -hmm. So, Sham, you want to see him I'm more, right? In a lot of sessions. <laughs> to Ashish. See, Ashish? Yeah. <laughs> Even I am also. Thinking to give uh, some, be a new software speaker sometime. Yes, yes, why not? I think, uh, Sham, we have wonderful uh, groups across the countries. Uh, so when you are ready with the topic, you can pick up Mules of Leader, discuss with them. I think I've seen that Mules of Leaders are, uh, uh, you know, helping in that area also. Like anybody chooses a topic, so we can guide them that, you know, what exactly you can pick it up and uh, when you can give the sessions and etc which group it will be suitable etc so that way i think if you are ready with the topic 
then uh, people are there to help you. Yeah, Java 11. How about that one? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Is everyone using J JDK 11 for their mule runtimes and for their anybody studio? Yes, I think JDK 11 uh, only uh, I am using. Uh, unfortunately for me, my uh, administrators have not allowed me to have admin access on my work <laughs> laptop. Oh. So I still have 302 version of Java 8. Really? Um, yeah. This, this week, I've been trying to use Anypoint Studio. doesn't work. It can't change the, the Anypoint any. Uh, yeah. It requires Java yeah. 11 minimum. So obviously, the, it's come to a time for uh, forcing you to use the newest version of Java. Yeah, yeah, got it. Okay, I think uh, if uh, on a good note, we'll wrap up these sessions and uh, please uh, have a look on the upcoming Yulesoft events and soon we'll be coming up with uh, our uh, session 10. Okay, thank you everybody. Have a good weekend to everyone. Thank you so much. Bye. Thanks for having yes, me. Yes, yes. Bye-bye. Once again. Thank Bye. You. Take care everybody. Bye -bye.